Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here and welcome back to EVE Talk, your weekly look at the market in EVE Online. And in last week, some things happened. We got the Grand Prix that is running at the moment. It's something extra to do while we play EVE Online. That is if the servers are online because we did have some server problems last week as well. Luckily, I was at work uh, for most of that, so I, didn't, I wasn't inconvenienced too much by all of it. We also have the new CSM 13. Have to be honest, I completely missed out on uh, everything when it comes to the CSM not sure it was maybe not so much um, on my mind or there was not as much publicity uh, for this one as there was for the previous ones I think perhaps because they used to always announce everything um, at FanFest and so you would have this run-up period where they could very easily um, do a lot of uh, publicity around the CSM. But I, I basically completely missed it, um, except for the go vote part that came on the launcher. Um, and uh, on the EVE Online subreddit, there's actually a, a war going on with the Star Citizen subreddit, apparently over the venture model. Uh, I do think it's always a good idea to point out when uh, there is potential uh, conflict there when it comes to uh, to art being uh, stolen or copied. Uh, but uh, I would personally just let the companies figure out what needs to be done on that front. Um, uh, still, it's pretty funny to see um, how... Uh, um, how viciously uh, some fans can uh, defend their uh, games. Well, let's get started here. We are uh, here for the market, of course, the market for a game that actually exists at the moment. And as always, we are going to start out with some uh, plex and stuff, and that's at 155. Like that. And look at that. You may already have seen it in the ticker as well. 2.8 million, a little bit above that for the sellers in Gita. That is down in price again. If you look at the chart here, we are getting very close to a one year low point. You could really say that we are at the one year low point from exactly one year ago. And then look at the rest of that chart. Back up with a very big spike up to 3.4 million in August. You can't really guarantee that that's going to be uh, repeated. But I like the high point in December as well around a winter patch, a winter expansion. That is very important to note. And so here we have a very classical pattern that we actually have not seen in several years. But before the, uh, the, the monthly releases, when we were talking about bi-yearly expansions, this was the pattern that came back again and again. You have a slump down towards the summer, which now to me this looks a whole lot like bottom uh, like bottom prices and then you would have a bit of a recovery some sometimes some volatility in the summer but you would generally have a peak into winter when the expansion came back when more people are playing as well because the summer slump is uh, is a factor in this lower price it's ccp sales mostly but there are other factors here as well and 2.8 million for the sellers is only 1.4 billion for a month of game time a price below 1.5 billion is something we've not seen in quite a while so the chart looks super interesting if you're looking to make that plex investment if you look at the prices outside of Gita as well you can see sellers coming in at 2.8 million these are starting to get bought out because uh, when I was checking the prices for the ticker, there were way more than this available at 2.8 million and the buyers are just below 2.8 uh, million. So, um, so keep, keep in mind here, uh, if you still want that investment, make that move quickly. But you know anything below 2.9, you can see on this chart, um, is probably still in a pretty damn good uh, region so very very interesting uh, in my opinion may june another uh, low price at the moment of four plex and then if we take a look at this entire chart right we're, we're right on the money year over year where it would have been the right time to buy plex and then we can look at that december january high point i like what i'm seeing here personally if it weren't for the fact that i already have quite a bit of plex um, available so actually i have i think way more plex uh, in my vault than i have isk in my wallet so i'm not sure if i'm actually going to make a lot of these investments but i might i might make a small one at this point it really looks quite interesting 
Next up, we have the multiple pilot training certificate that is holding at around 1 billion ISK. So uh, as I said, 1.4 billion for 30 days game time. True Plex at the moment, 1 billion for the sellers and 955 million for the buyers of the multiple pilot training certificate. Here again, I would say potentially this is still okay if you have a longer horizon. We are on this second leg down after the first bottom at 900 million. You're still buying them for less than a billion uh, with a little bit of luck on the buyer side of things. So I would say that this is still looking okay as well uh, for that longer term. We can also clearly see the potential here. 1.4, 1.5 billion is absolutely possible for the multiple pilot training certificate. Next up, let's take a quick look at the extractors that are following suit uh, when it comes to uh, their correlation to Plex prices, breaking through the 330 million mark. Again, we can see the very similar chart, of course. Um, we are actually at a one year low point, even uh, compared to the entire chart, even compared to the very start here. 316 million for the sellers, 308 million for the buyers. Also something that you could potentially uh, make as an investment. If, for instance, Plex, it's three point million, something like that. Uh, 2.8 million, definitely affordable, doable, something that you can grab um, if you don't have that much. If you want bigger chunks, then perhaps the skill extractor could be a good idea as well. Um, it is strongly tied to Plex, but who knows? If CCP would come out with, with uh, some nice uh, skill lines and things like that, this demand might actually outstrip Plex all of a sudden. So you never know, the correlation is never absolutely guaranteed. Um, next up, let's take a look at the skill injectors. Here are the large skill injectors finally cracking under the pressure, holding at 800 million for a very long time, or now also falling back to uh, 780 million, at least breaking that on the chart here. Keep in mind though, the one year low point is 730 million. So we still have a little bit more to go uh, before we get there. But 772 for the sellers, that's now well below 800 million. 751, 752 pretty much for the first buyer as well. Very interesting situation to finally see that crack in the armor of the large skill injectors. These have basically been your um, go to if you still wanted to sell. Like a plexi investment, you could see the, the extractor as a plexi investment at a better price than what you were actually getting for the market on this downtrend. It would have been through selling some of your large scale injectors because you were still getting a lot of risk for that. Now, in order for them to catch up to the uh, one year low point that plex and the extractors are at, we do still need to uh, lose another fi uh, 50 million or something like that. Um, so that is still quite a ways to go. And here, Perhaps patience is the right move. Uh, if this has any momentum, if Plex and the extractors are any indicators, if there is indeed a bit of a summer slump at the moment, then you might actually see uh, a bigger pullback in the large scale injectors. Definitely one to keep an eye out for at the moment, I think, rather than uh, start the investment now. Whereas Plex, I would say with these um, uh, buyers and sellers this close to one another, this is probably going to start to form a bottom at this point. Uh, for the small skill injector next, also cracking not by that much, but going below 160 million, 157 for the sellers and 151 for the buyers. Again, look at the entire chart, might be a bit too early to make the jump, but if the pressure can keep up, there might be an opportunity later on. And then we have the daily alpha injector that does look to be at a pretty low point. Are we buying them for less than 50? Yeah, by a lot actually, 45.7 million for the buyers, less than 50 million for the sellers um 60 million a normal price without sales i think that is possible so maybe maybe these daily alpha injectors actually look uh, somewhat interesting if you want to make those investments at the moment very interesting situation um I have to see myself. I think a trip to Cheetah uh, is in order here uh, to see if I want to make any investments myself. Moving on to some minerals at 910, let's say. Like that. And uh, as always, we will start with Tritanium. You maybe have seen it uh, from uh, the ticker as well that week over week, we're pretty much in the same region, just above 5 is. But look at the chart, we did dip to 4.5 and then we had a little bit of a comeback on the volume increase. So was some dumping, was also some purchasing, some investing for Tritanium at less than 5 is. Um, 4.96 for the first seller, 
well, that's actually the wrong filter. So it's 508 for the first seller, 481 for the first buyer. Look at the volumes though. At 513, we've got 2 billion, 2 billion, 1.5 billion. Down here, we get another 1.1 billion, another billion here. So there are large volumes. There is a lot of supply available out there, but the market does seem to want to defend a 5 isk price range for Tritanium. Anything below that actually triggers investment. And that is something that I think I touched on as well last week. This is the summertime. This is a time of lower activity in the game, but this is also prep time for a lot of players. This is where you can actually make really good investments, long term plans, get your preparations done. And if, for instance, that would be capital and super capital production, then uh, grabbing all of that titanium below five isk, you've got a pretty clear uh, stock of. Um, um, of, of, of minerals at a certain price range in case of a war that is going to be a good investment and so I'm seeing this as a sign that there are bigger groups that are doing those preparations right now you've got this pretty steep slump but right away in just a couple of days the volumes are back up and we're back at five isk so that's a, a lot of purchasing uh, that must have happened here in order to make that happen very interesting in my opinion. Next up, let's take a look at Pyrite continuing the downward slope to a one year low point. Here, of course, we're not seeing that volatility. Why this does feel very risky? Because we know that a lot of these lower prices for Pyrite are due to CCP changes are now structural in the game. Might this make a comeback? Yes, sure. But it's going to take a little bit more than just war uh, for, for Pyrite to really come back. It's going to take um, an actual CCP intervention. So these are selling for 410 and the buyers are coming in at 392. Super, super cheap. Mexon might be a different story and exactly a little bit like a... Um, uh, what I was expecting when I saw what just happened to Tritanium, we've got the same pattern. We actually went as low as 65 isk on the chart, but look at that comeback, volumes back up, and then we are back above 70 isk. So 74.86 for the sellers and 70.11 for the buyers. Volumes here still half a billion coming in at the lowest price, but um, there is a bit of support uh, from the market here to keep Mexalon above 70 isk, which I think is very good news because 70 isk for Mexalon is not bad at all and it is definitely your focus if you're mining in Heisig. Isogem, the exact opposite story, continuing to uh, slowly go down to ever lower prices. 27.74 for the sellers, 27.72 for the buyers. Um, I am basically stocking whatever I'm making when it comes to uh, these types of minerals. Um, I'm not selling at these prices. I'm also very hesitant to make extra investments uh, on these because as I've said, I personally feel like a war might make a bit of a comeback, but if it's so massively oversupplied that you can depress the price for a year straight, then um, even destruction in a war is going to have to be so massive to outstrip everything else to really make a comeback here that, uh, that I think there are safer investments, which would be here these, these uh, slumps in, for instance, Tritanium and Mexalon. Next up, we have Noxium, one year low as well. That is definitely a crack in the armor here uh, where it broke through 300 disc for the first time and is now doing so uh, in a sustainable way. 292 uh, for the sellers, 278 for the buyers. Look at the volumes here. Uh, not that crazy because Noxium is a bit more rare, but it's still um, 7 million, 8 million units and all of this is now below 300 isk so this has been a, a price that was supported by the market and defended by the market for several times over the last year now it finally gave up and then the floodgates are open all of this now coming in at less than 300 isk for the sellers so it starts with 299 298 297 296 95 94 93 92 91 and it's just it keeps going down that is the danger of breaking one of these round number barriers once it's done and enough and a couple of people say okay i'm just gonna start to sell at this price range then the floodgates are open and we are in for one year low prices all of a sudden here we've got zydrine that is stabilizing so apparently six to seven and this seems to be um the new normal since we now have zydrine sources in heisek as well and wormhole space and other places through moon mining 635 636 for the sellers and 616 for the buyers uh, so 
compared to before the moon mining changes. This is a much smaller margin. The volumes are also uh, quite a bit more evenly distributed amongst sellers. And what is happening here, of course, is that these new Hasek players have come into the market and are basically doing regular sale uh, sales trips, uh, bringing in a couple of million that they've mined from their moon. And as a result, we have this massive depression and now here this bottom that has formed it's going to be the same pattern of course for mega sites uh, that is currently selling for 628 buyers coming in at 605 so here again 600 this just seem to be uh, something that the market has settled on as a normal price for these minerals uh, we've never really seen it come into play too much um, so we're on the seller side we're still well above that on the buyer side we're a bit above that um, again the danger would be have a massive dump get below 600 and and find out that the price is actually going to be 500 to 600 disc that is still possible so always be a little bit careful um, on, on the mineral charts at the moment when it comes to one year lows these are structural changes to the game that have caused this these are not the same types of opportunities as what we are seeing uh, in plex for instance and then finally, we also have a Morphite that is a slightly different mineral, of course, because it is not tied to take one production, holding at 9,000 ISK, 9,200 for the sellers, 8,700 for the buyers, 8,700 on the charts. You could consider these uh, buy orders there if you really want a Morphite um, investment, but personally, I would wait for the chart to basically break through that 9,000 ISK barrier and take a look at the buy orders then, probably between 8 and 8,500 should be a possibility. After that, we have PI that's at 1620. Like that. And I suspect that, oh, that's interesting. Okay, a little bit of uh, volume increase and then an increase in price. So some people um, have been uh, following the advice probably not due to viewers this, this is actually a very obvious thing to do actually um, when these advanced pi materials break through their averages and get on sale you have really low buy prices this is the time to really make a strike and uh, start your investments for the future ccp projects that we know about but are not on the radar at the moment uh, more structures, gates, things like that. So this absolutely makes sense. This is logical. You've got this um, this uh, average price of 2 million that we managed to reach a couple of times, but then you've got the volume increases and we are back towards a more normal price, 2.3 million for the sellers and 2.15 million for the buyers. So these buyers have gone below 2 million, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and that's when there was a nice little opportunity uh, in broadcast notes to invest. I think this is going to continue through the summer unless CCP all of a sudden comes out with lots of information about um, structures. As long as that's not the case, this is the pattern that you do want to look for. These bottom prices, uh, average prices close to 2 million. That's when you really can make these investments in broadcast notes, for instance. And some people are definitely following up on that. Construction blocks next back at 13,000 is around there, so above average by a bit. 13,300 for the sellers, 12,700 uh, for the buyers. That is basically a bit above average at the moment. Not a bad time for construction blocks. Consumer electronics holding at a pretty steady uh, 13 to 14,000 is close to 14,000 is so 14,500 for the sellers, 13,600 for the buyers pretty wide margin here but basically basically i think a pretty healthy uh, position for consumer electronics the coolants are landing on the up uh word landing if, if there's something like that uh at 10,000 is here not bad uh, personally if i would be making lots of coolants uh i would sell at this point 10,300 for the sellers 9,600 for the buyers i would bring my stuff to the market try to get rid of it because um we, I really am not sure uh, if this is going to last too long. My current thinking is that yes, there has been an increase in demand for fuel uh, because of the new moon mining um, changes. So there's lots and lots of moons that are now have refineries on them that also need fuel. So there is probably more demand, but we are talking the summer slump as well. And when these prices came down like this, I do think a lot of people will have switched from coolant production to other stuff that was making them more ISK for the same volume. And so I do see a bit of a pullback at some point because some people might 
reswitch to the very easy production of coolants and we might actually see lower activity in the game a little bit so i'd be i'd be willing to to just try and sell now see this as a nice sell opportunity enriched uranium next if the chart wants to load oh dear uh chat channel is still going yep so it was just a little bit of lag all right we didn't get kicked out here um breaking through that 11 uh, mark on the downtrend so a little bit below average you could say but really very steady price here 11 300 for the sellers 10,900 for the buyers i think that here you can go either way you can wait even longer maybe for um, even more demand at some point to to maybe see it come back at 12,500 but right now if you're selling um or if you're hoarding and rich uranium you might be stuck with it for a very long time integrity response drones landing on 2.5 million we would again love to see that a little bit lower than that but 2.6 million for the sellers 2.5 for the buyers yeah i mean considering the spikes on an introduction of a structure this could be okay but this is not exactly a clear opportunity as what we saw with the broadcast nodes mechanical parts um up to 11,000 isk now going back down a little bit so here i would say 11,300 for the sellers 10,300 for the buyers definitely something you want to sell at this point because you can clearly see that a peak has formed that that has stopped and um, on if my theory is correct with the summer activity and with um, possible uh, switches in production we might actually go back down have to give back a little bit of that ground that we made up here nuclear reactors continuing to be really low in price where are the buyers at that's the question 86,000, not bad and 89,000 for the sellers in my opinion look at this entire chart we are definitely at the low end of it of things a nice opportunity to grab some nuclear reactors it's been so for a couple of weeks but you can see that the downtrend on the 20 day moving average has been continuing and is now slowing down at the tail end Robotics next, staying at 100,000 ISK. So here again, could go either way. I would say 102,000 for the sellers, 95,000, 96,000 for the buyers. Basically, definitely an okay price to sell at. And um, don't hoard too much of this, expecting any massive increase in price. Because this is definitely tied to fuels as well. The self-harmonizing power course, is that a bit more interesting? Well, we have a couple of days where we went below 2 million ISK, but at the moment, unfortunately, uh, we are back to 2.2 million and almost 2.1 million for the bar. So I would say that uh, after last week, uh, if talk, apparently some more buying has been happening in these advanced PI materials. Some people have grabbed the opportunities that were there and well that means that if you want to make these investments you will have to pay very close attention to the market not just on a weekly basis but probably um, try to keep an eye on them every single day for those slumps for those average days where all of a sudden someone is dumping enough self harmonizing power course to bring the average price down to less than 2 million that's when you can also uh, grab some of the cheap ones superconductors a uh, bit below average you could say or around the normal price for it um, 11,800 to 900 for the sellers 10,500 for the buyers it's still definitely okay compared to the fuel prices on this chart it's actually on the low end um, test cultures next all right finally going down i find this very interesting it's clearly also tied to the production of advanced pi materials and to structures because of this massive spike here but it managed to hold quite strong in may which was very unusual um, i thought all of this would be speculation on a structure announcement at fanfest that didn't happen but it also didn't slump back down to really low prices like less than 8000 is but here now we can clearly see that the daily averages are on the downtrend that that is finally cracking 9400 for the sellers but 8000 isk for the buyers look at 8000 isk on the charts that is at this point right here so 
this is definitely another one that I personally do keep an eye on uh, when it comes to uh, a potential investment that will probably yield us uh, some profit when CCP announces the net next uh, structures plan for the game. And 8,000 ISK to 9,400, that's a very wide margin. So any fresh supply here is going to keep bringing that chart down. And who knows how much to, well, look at that, get rid of all of these. And we're talking 7,500 for buyers. If we ever get to that point, then I think that that's pretty much a no brain uh, investment because then we're pretty much below the entire chart. And finally, we have wetware mainframe, same pattern here. Look at that, breaking down to less than 2.25 million for the wetware mainframes. Doesn't last too long, a bit of a volume increase, almost twice the normal averages. And we're back at 2.5 million, so they're not going too crazy. 2.4 million for the sellers, 2.3 million for the buyers. That's still okay if you need them right now, but um, the, the opportunities get snatched up very quickly on these advanced PI material markets. So uh, you have to be very close, uh, to pay very close attention to them if you actually want a chance to grab them yourself. Interesting. Next up, we have the Tick One ships at 25.15. And here, of course, I'm not expecting anything to major apocalypse continuing to go down towards 130 million on average. This is basically uh, the really cheap minerals across the board that are making it possible to make apocalypses at these prices. And so the price is going down. Uh, another thing to look at is maybe demands. You know, two, one is the normal number that are being uh, bought here. There is some demand for the apocalypse, but it's really not that great. The Caracal next dropping, if this is true, less than 8.5 million, then we are at a one year low point. And we are 8.4 million for the sellers, 8 million for the buyers. This is the cheap minerals uh, coming through here. Honestly, 8.4 million for the sellers and 8 million for the buyers. You could consider grabbing some of these really cheap caracals before an alliance comes in and swoops in to buy a couple hundred of them. Um, I think you can. Then you have to be patient, but a big war in Nalsec is going to involve the caracal at some point, I think, for Alpha clone fleets. And as a result there, you might actually look at the entire chart, be quite okay. This is a popular ship that often gets bought in massive quantities uh, by alliances. So... It's something to consider. On the other hand, if you're interested in industry, of course, you've got the exact uh, same opportunity that I'm thinking about it. If you've got the Caracal Blueprint, which I, for instance, have, buy the minerals, you're making them at these price ranges, have the patience for higher prices, uh, maybe find the right market to sell them at uh, when a war actually strikes. You know, that's the preparation that as an industrialist you can make and you can make a lot of ISK there because the normal price for a caracal is definitely like 10 million ISK. So that's a 20% profit that's that's pretty easily made there. So again here, summertime, lower activity, lower demand, lower prices, but also opportunities for the people that can prepare and that have a little bit of a long horizon. I find this uh, caracal chart actually very fascinating. It's making me think about starting up some industry, trying to find some ways to uh, start to produce some potentially in meta uh, goods for Nalsic and seeing where I might want to, uh, to try to put them down interesting again damn it's a good week in if talk for me uh, to be honest i'm getting a lot of inspiration here the catalyst is pretty much on a, a lower average 1.1 million for the sellers and 1 million for the bars this is of course a ganking ship so it's a bit different you could say from something like the drake that you can clearly see in the last few months has been reeling from the lower mineral prices well below 45 million 43.4 for the sellers 39 for the buyers Ferox next, one year low point, breaking 40 million, really 41 for the sellers, 37 million for the buyers. Same thing here, Ferox actually popular platform in Nalsec as well. When it comes to uh, to big fleets and, and, and to the massive fights, you do often see Ferox fleets there. And just look at where we are on the chart. Would I buy a massive amount of them as an investment? No, but are you interested in industry? And do you wanna make something that will later in the game potentially be sold for 50 to 55 million ISK when you can sell them at the right time? At the moment, you're making them 
in all likeliness for less than 40 million on the mineral account. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, Megatron next really also falling off a cliff here, 130 million, yeah, 131.5 for the sellers, 123 for the buyers. Basically, these low mineral prices have made the production costs of these ships even lower. Um, Oracle next, again, same thing, dropping off and at a one year low point, 61 million for the sellers, 31 million for the buyers. Well, you could, uh, you could definitely put up a buy order on this one. It shows the complete lack of demand in the Oracle at the moment. Uh, nobody is uh, buying them at any reasonable price. Try 40, try 50. If you're lucky, if you're fast, uh, you might grab a couple. I don't think this will last too long, but uh, again, one year low prices everything in the tech one market is reeling from these low mineral prices the raven is sort of holding on it's actually doing okay at 147 million bars coming in at 132 then we've got the retriever after reaching a one year low point is back at 20 million is 21 for the sellers 18 for the buyers slight volume increase you can see that there are some people looking at tech one investments this is a mining barge and i'd say that this is actually a bit of an understandable gamble it's it's one that i can personally uh, see um if ccp does decide that these these super low mineral prices and the super low tech one prices are a problem what is the easiest solution nerf the orcal nerf the orca uh, bring uh, mining barge uh, mining back uh, to the forefront and then these investments do make sense it's a it's a gamble of course uh, but it's a scenario that is not uh, impossible next up we've got the tempest also again except for if we disregard the arms race event at a one year low point around 130 million 138 for the sellers but 115 for the buyers again that margin opening up there's just no demand the Trasher is holding a below 1 million isk. So 950 for 950,000 isk for the uh, sellers and 800,000 for the buyers. Tornado dropping towards a one year low point as well. Are we selling them for less than 60? Yeah, 56.5 million for the sellers, 51 million for the buyers. Another one where I'm not sure if you want to invest in a hundred of them in Jita, if that's a good idea, but if you're looking for something to make right now, that's gonna be very cheap um, when it comes to the minerals that you're purchasing um, for industry, this could be interesting as well, in my opinion. The Tristan, again, below 500,000 is can staying there. And then we've got the Venture that's, yeah, that actually reached a one-year high point and now is back below. Maybe, maybe uh, there's a scam involving Star Citizen uh, players now that we've seen that Vulture module that, that looks super uh, close to, to this Venture model. Maybe uh, some people are buying Ventures to try and sell them somehow uh, to, uh, to Star Citizen players. Uh, or prospects you could say vex are below 9 million is here eight points yeah less than 9 million for the sellers 8 million for the buyers same thing here one year low point um you're making vexors with the minerals from the market now you're making them for maybe 8 million 8.5 million something like that and uh normally you can get more than 10 million for a vexor so in uh, an active war situation, you're probably making even more ISK than this. So really very interesting situation in the tech one market. Although it's the same, we are still at low demand, low usage, not enough destruction, and then the low mineral prices are just pushing everything down. But for the people that wanna prepare for the future there, uh, I do see some industrial potential basically. I don't think you need to go too massively in the investment front, but I like what I'm seeing when it comes to, are you interested in production? Well, take a look at what you can make for what price right now. And then of course, the real, the second part of the game is gonna be find the right opportunities. Next up, we have the take two ships at 33 minutes. And here, well, we could see some movements um, like this. I was actually expecting that the Ares going back up from 30 million. Why? It's because of the Grand Prix, of course. Travel scepters are uh, a very easy way of doing that. 37 million for the sellers, 32 million for the buyers. So that's, I think, a little bit of extra demand because of the Grand Prix. Does mean that the prices will go down. It means that we are in a sell opportunity right now. Cerberus continuing to stay pretty high. Um, at the moment, in my opinion, 290 for the sellers, 270 for the buyers. 
yeah, if you need one, buy a Cerberus, but uh, when it comes to investments, it feels pretty risky. The Claw, it's actually an interceptor that's pretty cheap, landing at 30 million. So 32 for the sellers, 29, 30 million for the buyers. Again, it's too high for me to say I'd invest in that. So if you still need a travel scepter, this one seems to be affordable. Um, the Crow, after reaching 37.5 million, let's say 30 million, is gives back a little bit of ground, but staying pretty damn high at 34.5 for the sellers, more than 30 for the buyers. That's not where I'm going to invest my ISK. Crusader, same thing, right? Reaching a high point of 35. Bit of ground lost, but uh, definitely not anywhere near buy order territory. Um, Heretic, um, actually going up in price here. Just the lack of availability, which is a little bit crazy. Then the Hound went through 30 million. So here I did say last week, that could be interesting if you can grab a couple of buy orders. Currently already selling at 32 million again, 27 for the buyers. Yeah, I think that there is more potential in these stealth bombers at some point. Uh, again, on Nasik activity. I would love to see the chart below 30 million when I decide to pull the trigger like we could have last week. Uh, the Ishtar, after reaching a high point of 400 million, is back to 300 million. Um, so that's back at a well relatively reasonable price you could say the manticore okay that's a bit of a drop off but uh, staying above 30 million and then slowing down now already 33.4 for the sellers 31 million for the buyers that's again unfortunately a bit of a note um, to me that may be a mistake maybe um, well, especially if we can get rid of these two buyers you can buy them for like 20 uh, just below 30 million that would probably be a good purchase of the manticore it's always been more expensive than the other stealth bombers uh, the nemesis double spike up to 40 million that's pretty crazy 41 for the sellers 30 million for the buyer so here we have a sell opportunity and i would not have called this a buy opportunity um, the pontifex well it's just too expensive right now 90 million um, so not even sure uh, when that is going to finally really drop off a little bit when it comes to the bigger take two ships here is the purifier again 30 million nowhere near uh, in range so buyers at 29.5 sellers at 35 it's a bit of a gap here uh, but i would love to see the chart to be lower before i say all right here we can buy um, raptor taking off again increased volumes i would say that this is probably grand prix related 40 million for the sellers 32 so that's a sell opportunity the saber stable at around 75 million stiletto next what are we seeing here again that 30 million mark which has been in play before we're nowhere near that so that's a big no for me um the stork dropping off a little bit but unless we're seeing something like less than 75 million on the buyers and they're still coming in at 80 million despite the fact that it's not a lot of them um, i would say no volumes are so a little bit too low to risk trades here at the moment darren is next to, again above 30 million where are the buyers at 29 million ah that's again not good enough for the investments um in my personal opinion i, I would need to, to see clear cut uh breaks uh, below average prices on some of these ships like here for the nemesis before i say okay this is definitely something you can jump into um so at the moment just still too much volatility too much unpredictability in the tech 2 market there's a bit of an impact from events of course on these actually a very big impact in the cruisers as well from events but then when it comes to the cruisers uh, even the popular ishtar is like 100 a day the cerberus is like 50 a day um it's just not enough to say i'm going to make massive trades in those uh, in my opinion um so the take two market very tricky um to uh, to do trades in at the moment in my opinion next up we have the take three market at 38 minutes let's go um does feel like i rushed through take two a little bit but uh, again i i feel like this one is still not where it should be uh, before you can you can reliably start to trade in it. So it's that's just why I'm not feeling too good about it. The tech tree market could be a little bit different. So let's get started as always with the destroyers. Here is the confessor staying actually going down towards 35 million is that should be more supply. 
Uh, it's a bit, but it's nothing too crazy in the volume. So 37 for the sellers and 33 million for the buyers. If you look at the entire chart, 33 million for the buyers is really a very cheap uh, confessor. So I'd say on this downtrend here that we're just seeing on the chart, you could consider trying a couple of cheap confessors as an investment. They are popular in NALSEC if a war breaks out. So again, it's a longer term investment. You are dependent on some actual destruction and, and some NALSEC warfare in the game, but it is possible. The Hecate on the other hand is holding above 40 million. Whoops, that's a misclick. 42.5 uh, for the sellers and 39 for the buyers. Obviously not the same thing as the confessor and volume wise and uh, just starting to be a bit more here last 24 hours is, is almost the entire uh the entire screen here volumes are up but nothing too crazy so here in my opinion the manufacturers of these shores are trying to take advantage of the, of the higher hickety prices but are very careful not to crash prices into oblivion either very smart in my opinion i think there is way more potential out there but that at the moment um, they are playing the game very carefully and very smartly. Uh, the Jackdaw landing at 37.5, buyers at 36 million. Um, so not as good as the Confessor. What is noted here again? 31, 51, 56, 15. It's a little bit more coming in here. Um, once you start to see 100 and 100 and coming in, that is when you could potentially see another uh, leg down and a, a buy opportunity form. So for the Jackdaw, if you really want a couple, I think it's still okay. 36 million is definitely a reasonable price, uh, actually a low price for a jackdaw. Um, but uh, more volumes coming in there could be better off going for that 33 million for a confessor and wait for that as well for a jackdaw uh, on any more uh, supply. This could happen. The Zweepel next basically holding at the current price range as well. 33.5 million for the sellers and here are the first signs look at that 120 247 um at 36 million is so that's a lot of vapors it is of course keeping this vapor from breaking back out here and the potential is towards even lower price because we're seeing this vapor is basically locked in by hundreds of them but we have more jackdaws coming in we've got more hecates sorry we should have done that here we get more hecates coming in we get more jackdaws coming in the confessor is slow so it's it's normal that it's not coming in here but you can see in my opinion that there is way more production potential out there than what we're seeing on the market right now and if that actually um, on even lower summer activity um comes to the market then we'll have some real buy opportunities like what we had exactly a year ago if you look at a chart a year ago 30 million that's where we come from 25 million for a jackdaw so let's keep that perspective in mind here um, before we pull the trigger a couple of confessors wouldn't blame you a couple of jackdaws could happen as well but don't go too crazy in the volumes because if this keeps growing then um, yeah then this might come into play again very interesting uh, in my opinion it, it we need some patience but that uh, scenario i think is a possibility so we'll have to keep a close eye on it in the upcoming weeks and maybe even especially um, july early august could actually be the time where everything is at its slowest at its lowest um, after that once announcements come um, so for for like maybe a winter expansion or things like that that's when uh, it will probably be too late so yeah keeping a close eye on this for the potential is important um, the legion next year basically at 180 uh, let's take a look at it 186 for the sellers 163 for the buyers what, what i'm seeing here is that the volumes are still low enough to be completely manipulated so that's a big no for me on the legion market the proteus dropping off to 150 and why is that happening um nope that's a little bit older nothing too crazy 159 for the sellers 145 for the buyers um volumes are abysmal though so that's a no for me in investment we missed the loki that is down to 200 million well, that's relative 240 for the sellers 201 for the buyers last 24 hours there's just 10 of them so that's again nope 
uh, on the potential like increased production, increased growth of the market so that it, it's not so easily manipulated by a couple of players. Here's the Tengu 172, 160. And again, the volumes aren't there yet to, um, to really say that uh, this is back into a fair play market. This one where you could trade in, is one that you should start to invest in. That's a no. It is still the case, in my opinion, though, when it comes to these destroyers. That's where my interest lies in the upcoming weeks, I think. Um, what I'm personally considering that might happen would be if all of these destroyers do get in an oversupply situation, you might actually get a normalization of the tech tree market before you get a complete crash of the price in the destroyers, because then you could start switching production to more uh, cruisers, bring that to the market, try and make your ISK that way is still a possible scenario. But the normalization of this market, you know, increasing the volumes to such a, uh, a number that it's not so easily manipulated, I think would give us more predictability in the chart, would give us more perspective into, yes, we're at a low point, we're at a high point here just crazy shenanigans going on unfortunately so there we go that's also an aspect of lower activity in the game of course things like that can happen as well uh, but it's still interesting very interesting week in my opinion especially for the people that are looking to use the summer time as a preparation period an investment period a period to build up and get ready for future projects which is definitely something that i try to do every summer as well for the extra product i'm going to take a quick look at the uh, yacht where is it because i've seen it be so popular um, when it comes to the Grand Prix. So let's say 45 minutes. So it's just gonna be one little extra ship. I think we already have quite a bit to, uh, to talk about and to think about. Um, or can I find it? How do you spell it, the yacht? Is it like that? Nope, it's maybe with an O. Yeah, my spelling isn't that great. Nope, but it, it is luxury, I think. Oh, yacht. Y-A-C-H-T. Okay, well, my, my English is kind of bad. So here is... Uh, is it then this one? Yeah, there we go. There we go. So this is uh, the uh, victorious luxury yacht. It has this... Uh, immunity to interdiction, sphere launchers, warp disruption generators, and mobile uh, warp disruptors. So uh, it's also covered up, capable, and this is something that a lot of people have basically been using for the Grand Prix. Going for 150 million at the start of it, you can clearly see the volumes uh, that increased as well from an average of like maybe 25, something like that, to 125 on the first day. Now costing 200 million isk, 171 for the buyers is this important well it's the very first time that we're seeing an event like the uh the grand prix come in considering that it's called the federation grand prix i think it's there is a very high chance that ccp will put this on a yearly rotation have this come back or maybe even make more uh, of these types of events if they turn out to be popular enough well i'm not exactly sure that that's going to be the case but on a yearly basis that's something to keep in mind give the victory luxury yacht half a year eight months to drop back in price a little bit and then be ready around fanfest around the anniversary uh, to grab a couple and uh, to uh, to have another grand prix come out you know you know which ship is going to come out uh, on top in the uh, interest brackets it is this victorious luxury yacht that uh, increased in price by about uh, a third 50 million on a 150 price not bad if we could have this predictable trade once a year it's something too that we of course have to remember a year from now um, but uh, this is that potential that we do see that when CCP comes out with something new, CCP does something, it usually does have an impact on the market. And uh, if we can predict that a little bit or if we can uh, be fast enough, it can actually make us uh, quite a nice bit of ISK on these uh, trades. So that's what I wanted to show for the extra product again here. I think it's a perfect example of something new happening to the game and you clearly see the impact on the market that's it for this week then guys thank you very much for watching and as always i'll see you next time